So where did I read, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that there might be up to 60 billion habitable planets in our own galaxy? Is that... Uh, yes, I think that that's, a, that's a good estimate because, uh, you know, there are 400 billion um, uh, stars and each of them may have multiple planets. Now, not all of those will be in the hab habitable zone, uh, you know, where life is possible, and not, of, not all of them will be rocky planets. Some will be giant gas giants like uh, Jupiter and Saturn. But some of them will be a, a significant fraction. What's will the be. statistical likelihood that some of them have a, a biosphere like ours? Well, we don't know ex exactly, but there are techniques being developed now to come up with those statistics. Uh, what's called biosignatures. They can actually look at the atmospheres of those exoplanets, those planets beyond our solar system, and see what is in the atmospheres. Maybe a, a, a signature that could be from life or related to life, mm -hmm. like oxygen. Uh, that's a big area now just being developed and when the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope goes up in 2018, that's the James Webb Space Telescope, they're specifically going to look for that sort of thing. You've been involved with NASA for mm -hmm. a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So what's NASA's interest in extraterrestrial life or consciousness life on other planets? Um, well, is, NASA's charter... This is a science realm. Yes, NASA, NASA's charter is to explore the universe. And I think there's nothing more exciting than if we would find life in the universe. So uh, that's why NASA is interested in it. And you could argue that uh, a lot of the work of NASA, a lot of the space science, uh, certainly the voyages, the tri trips to Mars with the spacecraft, were driven by this desire to know whether or not life uh, exists there. And this fascination goes all the way back at least to Percival Lowell in the beginning of the 20th century when they thought that they saw canals on Mars which might have been made by uh, intelligence. Uh, we know that that's not the case now, but there could still be uh, uh, some life uh, on Mars, perhaps under the surface. They've just in the last few weeks announced that they found liquid water I on the subsurface that. of Mars. We've known for a long time that there were water uh, at the, well, there's water at the poles, the North and South Poles, locked up in the ice. But to have liquid water there, that's one of the prerequisites for life. So it's very exciting. You also talked about the post-biological universe. What does that mean? Well, this is something that I uh, have written about. Uh, and it stems from the fact that if you take cosmic evolution seriously, you know, cosmic evolution is the idea that uh, w beginning with the Big Bang, the universe has unfolded over the last 13.8 billion years. Uh, and if you take that seriously, it's not only physical evolution or astronomical evolution, it's also biological evolution, which we see here on Earth, and cultural evolution, which is what the astronomers often forget about when they are searching for extraterrestrial intelligence and talk about what those civilizations might be. You know, cultural evolution totally dominates biological evolution. 10,000 years ago, we weren't much more uh, advanced biologically than we are now, but culturally, we certainly are different now than we were 10,000 years ago. And it's influencing ago. the behavior of our genes, we know that. That's right. So the idea is that the, uh, the post-biological universe is that you have to take cultural evolution seriously, and I come up with what's called the intelligence principle, that any society or civilization that can improve its intelligence will improve its intelligence, uh, whether it's here on Earth or out there. Available on CuriosityStream. Watch premium factual shows at CuriosityStream.com.